Hey guys, I'm Zoltan from Finance Miniatures, welcome back to the channel. Today I'll be painting the Bakunin Observance Action Pack which Corvus Belly was kind enough to send me ahead of the release date. I have been hyped about these guys since they were first revealed, so this will be a lot of fun. In this first video I'll be painting the two Cenobites and the Penitent Red Fury together since their schemes are quite similar and it is easy to use the same paints for all three of them. In the next video I'll be painting the Reverend Moiras, so check those out as well after this one. First things first, I primed all the models black. Two of these models are metal, so make sure that you get a full coverage with the primer, especially in the crevices. You can paint any metal bits shining through with your brush and a bit of black before you start with any other colors. Shiny metal in our shadow areas will be harder to fix later, so let's eliminate it now when it's easy. I'll be using the Vallejo colors that Corvus Belly recommends for the Nomads, so it is easy for you to follow along if you want, but it is quite easy to find the equivalent colors from other brands like AK or even Citadel as well. The red armor of the models is their standout feature, so we will be taking care of that first. The first order of business is to establish our shadow color, which will be hollow red. This will be the darkest color we will see on the armor panels and later we will cover 95% of it, but it will still be around in the shadows and it will make it easier to apply our other red colors, which would be difficult to apply over the black primer. The trick here is to achieve a full coverage everywhere. No black can shine through from under the brownish red by the time you are finished. I'm using the color from my wet palette and the only water I'm adding to it is coming from the palette plus some leftover moisture from the brush as I'm cleaning it every time it is out of paint. Ideally you use a consistency that is thick enough to cover in two layers. After the first one is dried you should still see a bit of black peeking out but the second layer should take care of that. If you need many layers you are thinning your paint too much and you will take too long to achieve full coverage and most likely end up not having a consistent coat. Make sure that you paint an area relatively fast and then don't disturb the paint until it is fully dried. If you disturb half dried paints you will end up with the ugly texture and rough surface everybody dreads. It doesn't matter if it looks like it doesn't cover fully, just let it dry and you can fix it with the next layer. I suggest you take your time with this one. It is not an issue if you make mistakes, everything else is still black so you can correct everything by applying a bit of black over it. The second step is to apply burnt red over at least 90% of what we just did. The process is exactly the same, but covering everything should be much easier over the whole red compared to the black primer. It is not the biggest issue if you cover everything, but if you have the brush control, try to leave a little bit of whole red behind, especially between the largest armor plates and in the shadow areas. Any parts that point completely towards the ground, for example the shin armor, you can leave as pure whole red. They are in shadow, so they should be kept darker. If all went well, you should be done with this in half the time it took to cover everything with the first color. At this point we are done with the base coat and it is time to move on to the highlights. The first highlight color will be flat red, and I'm not gonna lie, this thing I love and hate in equal measure. It's a beautiful color, but it is extremely translucent, meaning that you have to apply a ton of it to even show off on the armor. This helps us since it is super easy to create a gradient between this and the previous color without leaving behind obvious separating lines. So don't hesitate to apply lots of layers with this one and don't even try to thin it too much. What I hate about it is that it is time to start doing edge highlights, but since this color is so thin it can be a pain in the butt. Fortunately for us, we are not looking for thin edge highlights here, quite the opposite. If you are really good at razor thin edge highlights, this is not the time to do that. Just make sure to mark all the edges of the panels and it is okay, in fact even better if the lines are somewhat thick. We will do thinner ones inside these ones later and we will still want this color to be visible around them. The next step is probably the easiest. I mix flat red and orange fire 50-50 and use it only to highlight the upward facing parts. These are the same places we used the most amount of flat red in the previous step. Now we cover let's say 60% of that with this color. No need to edge highlight with this one, the purpose is to increase the saturation of our red a bit.
Now we get to the edge highlights. Mixing flat red and sunny skin tone, the end result is a desaturated pinkish color that will work quite nicely for our purpose. Remember when I told you that we don't need thin edge highlights with the flat reds? Well, this is when you actually need them. The more edge highlights you add, and the thinner they are, the more defined the model will look. If you feel up to it, you should also add fake edge highlights. This means that you can highlight not only the exposed edges of a panel, but also the sides that are next to another panel. Just make sure that there is a black lining between them. Finally time to really go for the definition by replacing the sunny skin tone with ivory. Mix ivory with flat red until you get an almost white result and use it to highlight the most obvious and upward facing edges. You can even add some dots of pure ivory to some of the edges and especially corners. With that done, it's time to move on to the white fabrics. I strongly advise to avoid using pure white here. Unless you're a magician, it will look like a mess if you try to use white on the black undercoat. Instead, I'll start with medium sea grey and I'll add more and more ivory to the mix as I keep highlighting. The guns are an interesting green color on the box art and there is nothing like that in the Nomad's paint set so I turned to my trusty AK interactive range and used camouflage green. While I applied it I was trying to preserve some of the black in the crevices but I wasn't too bothered if it didn't succeed since I could simply add it back later with some black lining. Once done it is just a matter of adding some ice yellow to the green to create a highlight color that I used to highlight all the edges. No need to go super high with the highlights, not all the materials have to go up to white, otherwise everything will look basically the same. The swords are exceptionally tiny, so there is not much we can do other than edge highlights. I used some very basic non-metallic metal gold on the hilts and then turned to turquoise for the blade. By adding ivory to the turquoise it is easy to get the edge highlighting colors we need to make the blades look energized. A 
the bigger blade of the penitent, I tried something a bit fancier and it turned out quite okay, I think. At this point, it was time to tackle the last big surfaces of the model. It is essentially two different things, black armor panels and the metallic bits, but we will paint them essentially the same way, but highlighting the metals more to differentiate them. It is worth noting that I am using basically the same colors for the fabrics, the metallics and the black parts, but with different levels of brightness to differentiate the materials. For the black parts, it is enough to add edge highlighting first with medium sea gray and then with either adding ivory to the gray or by using a lighter gray like sky gray for example. For the metal parts, I cover more of the surface with the gray and go up much more with the highlights. Similarly to the reds, the more highlights you can add, the more definition the model will have. That being said, don't go too crazy. If you add the same amount of highlights everywhere, it will lose the contrast and will simply look white. In the deeper shadows, it is enough to add a couple of dots on the edges or nothing at all. The more exposed the area, the more highlights it needs. I try to only add the brightest highlights in the front upper half of the models to concentrate the attention there and to create contrast with the rest. With this done, the models are essentially finished, but you can add a couple of effects and of course finish the bases according to your preference and the rest of your army. And this is how the end result looks like. I hope you guys found this video useful. Don't forget to tune in for the next one when I am painting the Reverend Moiras. See you in that one.